The hypothalamus is connected to the pituitary gland, and the pituitary gland is also called the hypothesis, and it's connected to the hypothalamus via a stalk called the infundibulum. And the hypothalamus, recall, is a neuroendocrine gland. So the pituitary now, it secretes at least eight major hormones. And this is part of the hormonal stimuli. And the pituitary has two separate lobes, two major lobes. The first one is the posterior pituitary. And the posterior pituitary is also called the neurohypothesis and it secretes neurohormones and these neurohormones are oxytocin and ADH. The anterior pituitary is more of a traditional endocrine tissue. It's also called the adenohypothesis and it secretes several different hormones. So the posterior lobe is the neural tissue and it maintains this neural connection to the hypothalamus thus the neuro part of the neuroendocrine for the hypothalamus and the two hormones are oxytocin and ADH. So these hormones themselves they are released from the hypothalamus they're stored in axon terminals in the posterior pituitary gland, and they're released when needed in the body. So this particular slide is now showing the interaction of the hypothalamus as well as the posterior pituitary. So at the top of this slide, we see the hypothalamus, and those neurons are going to synthesize oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone, ADH. They then are stored in the axon terminals in the posterior pituitary gland, and then they're released when needed. And so this is a different mechanism than what's in the anterior lobe, the adenohypothesis. So the anterior lobe is the glandular tissue, the more... Um, traditional endocrine tissue and in this case the hypothalamus secretes releasing and inhibiting hormones they bind to receptors in the anterior pituitary gland and the anterior pituitary gland responds by secreting various hormones and those hormones we can see shown here so if we look at the Hypothalamus, the hypothalamic neurons, are going to synthesize and um, they're going to synthesize releasing and inhibiting hormones. And basically, these are hormones that either tell the anterior pituitary to secrete a hormone or tell it not to secrete a hormone. So the connection between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland is called the hypotheseal portal system. And it's basically a blood connection that's between the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland. So the anterior pituitary gland now is going to, when it's stimulated, it's then going to respond by releasing various hormones. And these hormones are listed here. There's the growth hormone, thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, follicle-stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, and prolactin. And a lot of these words are kind of difficult to remember, but remember if you break them into pieces and parts, it helps. And it kind of tells you what it does. So adenocortico means that it affects the cortex of the adrenal gland, for example. So our next slide is kind of summarizing what we talked about already for the posterior pituitary gland. And uh, again, the posterior pituitary gland is going to store these two hormones, oxytocin and ADH, and they are going to um, be released then 
based on need. So for example, oxytocin is released when there's uterine contractions released during childbirth. Act, they act as hormonal triggers for milk ejection. And in this case, it's a positive feedback mechanism. So it's one of those exceptions in the body. So the stimulus is uterine contractions. It causes oxytocin to be released. And the response is more uterine contractions. The second of the hormones that's stored in the posterior pituitary gland is ADH, the antidiuretic hormone. And this is responsible for concentration of fluid. So when the concentration of the fluid is too high, the posterior pituitary is triggered to secrete ADH. So this prevents the diuresis prevents loss of urine and instead that water is going to stay in the blood thus diluting the blood plasma to lower the concentration back to normal. It targets the kidney tubule specifically to reabsorb more water to inhibit or prevent urine formation and it's inhibited by alcohol and drugs or I'm sorry alcohol and diuretics and at high concentration, it also calls, causes vasoconstriction. So for that reason, it's also referred to as vasopressin. This slide is summarizing the regulation and the effects of all of the hormones then that are um, stored or released from the pituitary. So the posterior pituitary, again, remember is um, the hormones are stored there. They're not re secreted and rele released from there. So oxytocin and ADH. So you should know what stimulates them, what inhibits them, and the target gland for these, and the homeostatic imbalances for them. So for example, low ADH is involved with diabetes insipitus. Now for the anterior pituitary hormones, the first one is growth hormone and the target tissue is bones, muscle, cartilage, liver, and low growth hormone leads to pituitary dwarfism in children, and if there's too much, gigantism in children, and in adults, it's called acromegaly because it occurs after the growth plate has actually closed. So again, make sure that you are aware of what stimulates it and what inhibits them. And basically, it's going to be stimulated by hormones that are secreted from the hypothalamus. GHRH stands for growth hormone releasing hormone. And then the inhibition is from growth hormone inhibiting hormone. So our homeostatic imbalances are diabetes insipitus and diabetes insipitus is due to an ADH deficiency and um, the opposite when there is uh, too much ADH it's called syndrome of inappropriate ADH secretion and in this case there's too much water retention of fluid so there's too much fluid that is being retained. And this leads to headaches, disorientation, um, and calls for fluid restric restriction, blood sodium level monitoring.